Women represent more than half of the population in many African countries, but they are underrepresented or misrepresented throughout all existing media, whether online or offline, news media or entertainment. Their votes are not heard. Their voices are not heard. They're likely to be portrayed in a stereotypical manner, and they're less likely to hold influential positions in the media and ICT. In 2015, Global Media Monitoring Project noted that in Africa, women's relative presence in the news has increased from 19% in 2010 to merely 22% in 2015. Women continue to enjoy less access to ICTs and the violence that women face offline is extending to online spheres. They still do not have access to this technology due to inadequate infrastructure, uh, affordability and availability, language barriers, illiteracy and even discriminatory social norms. The struggles are derailing the potentials of ICT in the empowerment of women. Despite the existing gaps, African countries continue to have weak or even no specific gender provisions in media, laws and policies. Well, joining me from Senegal is Ghanaian broadcast journalist Atienwe Mbila Lawson and from Lagos, uh, rather from Cape Town, South Africa, uh, Zimbabwean TV host and producer Vimbai Mutinhiri Ekmeong. Thank you very much for joining us, ladies. Thanks for and having me. And I'm in Accra, Ghana. Oh, you're in Accra, Ghana. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you yeah. for joining us, ladies. All right. So, um, I'm going to start with you, Vimbai. How do you think female journalists are perceived um, worldwide? Because, you know, growing up, when I tell people that I wanted to be a journalist, they'll say, hmm, you know, they had that smirk on their face. Um, but why, how do you think women are perceived in society when they say, hi, I'm a journalist? Um, you know, when uh, we look at the media at large and uh, I, I find that you can't really separate between you know journalism um acting music and so forth there's a superficiality that's attached to a woman who wants to be present in these visible industries um so more often than not uh, there's a perception that these women are you know possibly looking for attention uh, you know, trying to get their faces out there. It's never, it doesn't get the seriousness and the respect that it duly deserves. Uh, similarly with journalism, you know, internationally, you, you know, right now everybody's talking about the Oprah interview, for example. We do have budding Oprahs here in uh, on the African continent. We do have budding Christian Amanpours. But the question is, do they get the respect do they get the platforms? Do they get the acknowledgement that's befitting for the work that they're doing? And uh, unfortunately, the answer to that is generally a resounding no. Um, these positions are largely reserved for men. Interesting. Uh, Atewin, mean, there are people who think that um, women, or rather the media in itself, has not gotten the kind of acceptability it deserves in the African or on the African continent and so this is also um, the women who are receiving the you know back end or the wrong end of the stick is because we really don't understand and appreciate the power of the media talk less women who have decided to go into the media um, where do you stand on this I think um, if we're looking at women in media and the kind of respect that we're giving and the general impression of women in the media, first of all, you're seen very much as a pretty face. I think that women have to work extra hard in order to show that there's more uh, to the profession than just the makeup and the nice hair and the nice nails. There's a, a lot more to it um, than meets the eye. And I think also uh, when it comes to interviews and getting uh, the right persons to interview and uh, trying to, to ensure that you're taken seriously, there's a lot more that women have to do in order to get that kind of respect and also to get those big interviews generally. How should female journalists or women in the media deal with the harassments, the challenges that come with it, some of which we have mentioned, the pretty face, um, dealing with having to put their guests in check to say, well, I'm not a whore, I'm just here to do a job. How do you, how should women deal, I'm gonna, this question is for you, Vimbai. 
Um, you have done this job for, all, I mean, several years. So has Atienwin. So I'll start with you. How have you been able to deal with the harassments and the challenges that come? Sometimes these harassments sometimes come from your employers within your working environment and sometimes when you have to deal with outsiders. What do you do? You know, what we need to do with ourselves um, as, um, as a, you know, a community of women in media and women in journalism is to encourage each other to build up our boundaries. In my personal experience, I have found that, you know, having a certain demeanor, having certain boundaries, being, you know, you often have to be a little bit more extra in creating that distance than your male counterparts, but it's necessary. And in doing so, uh, at some point you will be taken seriously. You will be seen as brash, as aggressive and so forth initially. But this is when you have to, um, as she said earlier, this is where you have to work extra hard to prove yourself. Uh, because then your work speaks for you and, oh, yes, she's difficult and she's this and she doesn't like people in her space. However, she gets the job done. Mm. Um, where we sort of, our weakest link is the fact that so many women aren't able to draw these boundaries. So the norm has become powerful men, powerful people coming into our spaces of work uh, with an expectation that we're all going to be fluff and giggly and uh, excited about any advances. Mm. Now, we need to, that's why I said as a community, we need to build that because those weakest links are always, always, always going to be uh, that's, it's going to be definitive, unfortunately, of the broader state of the industry. If, um, you know, if the vice president of a huge corporation does 10 interviews in the day and eight out of them are, are beautiful ladies um, sort of faffing in a very flirty and giggly way, um, that's what we normalize. So we mm. need to be very careful about that. I think also with that, um, an important matter to look at is um, how much women are paid in the industry. Because a lot of the time you find that a lot of women are underpaid. And it's a very serious problem. It's not an excuse, you know. Because I was about to ask if that's an excuse. Uh, it's, it's not an excuse at all. However, that is the fact as it is. Women are highly underpaid. And so it's important that the institutions, the structures that are put in place, ensure that you get equal pay for equal work. It's very, very important to do that. And with that, you may find that more women may look to working harder and ensuring that we're able to get these interviews because we know that we will be adequately compensated for that. Another matter that I think we also need to look at is a top management, because media goes beyond being on the field or being in front of the television or speaking on radio. It's also about those at the top management. How many of them are women? How many of them understand the peculiar challenges that women have to go through on a daily basis? Let's look at when you're starting off with your career. Let's look at women who have families. Let's look at single parenthood. How many of these organizations have women in places that can actually effect the change? Mm -hmm. And for those who have the women in places that can actually effect the change, how many of them are actually doing that? Mm. It's very important to actually also examine that aspect of it, the matter to do with pay and management and uh, the role that women play and can play in facilitating the change in these structures to make the media more accommodating to women. I would want to go in uh, on this one, but lastly, ladies, um, when we talk about women who are, how many women do we have in positions of power or in top management? Um, there is also, there are people who are criticizing the fact that when these women, a few handful of them, find their way to those top positions, they seem to be a problem to other women who are working under them. So what's the synergy to grow other women to those positions? Maybe we're part of our own problems. Am I right or am I wrong? Please. <laughs> Vimbai, you're laughing. Please help me out. Well, you, you know what? There's, there's, still a, there's still a lot of that. Um, as much as we, we do want to believe that um, we're evolving, it, it's still a reality. Um, it, and that's not just in media, that's, you know, globally. Um, we're trying to build a sisterhood and women supporting women and so forth. And uh, because there is sort of, 
there, there's almost a gap in, um, shall I say, in ideology and mentality and outlook um, when you look at a certain generation and then the generation coming up. And that disconnect, uh, I believe, is what creates almost um, a sense of insecurity between the two people. So it takes away sisterhood. It's, it, it takes away all of the, the, you know, the pleasant things that you would like, the comforts that you would like from having your own kindred spirit in a senior position. Mm. Um, so, so I honestly think that we still need to do a lot of work in, in, in talking. Okay. Really, <laughs> in essence, what we need to do is, is we need to have these discussions. We need to open up each other's minds um, just so that we get to a point where we, real, where we accept that none is trying to threaten the other. Okay. We're, we're stronger as a collective as opposed to, you know, having a token woman who's sort of just there for the decoration um, and, and, you know, oppressing sort of other women coming up. The conversations, we just need to push with them. All right. And closing, in closing, Atirin? Yes, I agree. And I also think that we need to dispel the idea that because I went through this, you must go through it as well. Uh, women at the top also need to realize that you are there and you have a huge responsibility. And if your responsibility or your position can make it easier for another woman who is rising, can inspire her and can remove some of the bottlenecks that women face in the media, then it would really help a lot more women who are qualified and have genuine passion for the job, not just uh, the benefits or, or you know, the glamour that comes with it to actually enter the profession and to stay for a very long time in the profession. Sometimes, quickly, I know we're running out of time, but yes, we something are. that uh, stands out, especially in media in Africa, is we don't have a lot, especially in Ghana, a lot of older women, the veterans, still in the media. A lot mm. of them leave and go into corporate soon after because of challenges of this nature. So I think if that is changed, we may have more women staying in the media for longer, uh, also able to inspire and nurture others to come up. Well, I want to say thank you to you, Vimbai Mutinhiri Payong is a TV host and a, an executive producer, and she's from Zimbabwe, although we have taken her in, over in Nigeria. Atiyami is a, Atiyami Lawson is a broadcast journalist and a TV host in Ghana. Thank you, ladies. Very interesting conversation we've had. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be going to Burkina Faso and Tanzania. What are women facing in those countries? Right after this break.